from the team at We Love Baking. Today I'm going to share with you how to make a toffee apple cheesecake. This is an absolutely delicious no-bake cheesecake, perfect for autumn. Let's get going. So to start with, I am going to make my apples for my cheesecake filling. Now these apples are gonna get cooked, so I'm going to measure my ingredients into my saucepan. So over my weighing scale, I'm going to measure out some dark muscovado sugar. Today, of course, I'm using Tate and Lyle's dark muscovado. The molasses content off the sugar is absolutely beautiful. It goes really well. The caramelly flavor with the apples in the cheesecake is just divine. So straight into my saucepan, I'm going to measure out 25 grams of this sugar. So that's my sugar all measured out. So to that, I'm also going to add in some unsalted butter and a little bit of cinnamon. So what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to heat that up really gently. And while I'm heating it, I'm going to chop up some apples. So I have three apples here. You can see I use any apples that you want. If you've got some Braeburn, they're really lovely for a really lovely tart flavor. You can use something sweeter if you prefer as well. So these apples I'm using today are gala apples because they're really lovely and crisp and sweet and I think they work really well in this cheesecake. So with these apples, I'm going to peel them and I'm going to chop them up and they're going to cook down with this mixture that I've already got in there. So once your apples are cooked down, you want them still to be holding their shape, so you cook them on a really high heat, and that's gonna encourage the apples to release their juices. And then that combines with your sugar and butter and all of that, and it creates this beautiful caramelly kind of glaze for your apples. But because you cooked it really fast, it means the apples have still held their shape and they've not turned to mush. That's exactly what you want. So then we're gonna get chunks of apple throughout our cheesecake, and you're gonna get lovely crisp bites of apple throughout. Perfect. So this is now done. I'm going to pop it into a bowl so that it can cool before I use it in my cheesecake. There we go. So that's going to get set aside to cool. And while that is cooling, I'm going to crack on with some more of the cheesecake. So now that I've done my apples, I'm going to get started on my cheesecake. So for the base, I'm going to get, grab a bowl and in there, I am going to pop some crushed up digestive biscuits, some cinnamon, just because I love apples and cinnamon together, and some melted butter. We're gonna mix everything together, and this is our base then ready to be used. So once everything is mixed together, we're going to pop that into our cheesecake pan. Now I have here a springform pan, this is an eight inch pan, and I have actually got in the bottom of it a round of parchment paper that I have cut out and I've just laid it on. As you can see, it's not stuck down or anything. And that I do just as a way of helping me to get my cheesecake off the base of this really easily onto my plate. So when you transfer it, you can take the parchment off if you want or you can leave it on, but it just makes it loads easier to transport it off here. So into that, I'm going to pop my biscuit base. And once you've got your biscuit base in, you're just going to spread it out and then push it down nice and flat into the bottom. So now that my cheesecake base has been pushed into my tin, I'm gonna pop this in the fridge to let it chill while I make the cheesecake filling. So while my base is chilling in the fridge, I'm going to make my cheesecake filling. So into a nice large mixing bowl, I'm going to start with my cream cheese. Now, whenever you make a no-bake cheesecake, always make sure you use full fat cream cheese just because, excuse me while I pop, just because the fat in the cream cheese helps it set better. So you want to use full fat and not low fat or anything like that. So make sure as well, so that's tip number one. Tip number two with making a no big cheesecake is you want your cream cheese to be at room temperature. If it's not at room temperature, it doesn't mix as well and it can end up splitting and you'll end up with a lumpy cheesecake. So make sure you use full fat cream cheese and that your cream cheese is at room temperature. So while I got my cream cheese out and I gave you that little bit of extra information, I'm going to sift in my icing sugar. So of course, for today, I'm using Tate and Lyle's icing sugar. Now, the reason I love Tate and Lyle is because they use cane sugar to make all their sugars and that gives you a really lovely sweet flavor and not anything earthy or gritty or anything like that. It's beautiful and really good to work with. So directly into my bowl, I've got my weighing scales ready underneath. I'm going to measure out my icing sugar into my sieve and into my sieve, I'm also going to add in a little bit of cinnamon. And now we're just going to sift all that together. 
So once you have sifted all that together, I'm just going to move my wing scales away. We are going to give this a quick mix together. Now I am using electric whisks because I'm going to need them in a minute when I add my cream. So this is just going to make my life a lot easier. So we only want to mix this up until it is just combined and no more. So once that is fully mixed together, we're going to add in our final ingredient for the cheesecake, which is some double cream. There's a couple ways you can do this. You can whisk your cream up in a separate bowl and then fold both the whipped cream with your cream cheese mixture together. But for ease today, I'm just going to pour this in and whisk it up until it's thickened. So that is my cheesecake all mixed up. You can see it's beautiful and thick. That's exactly what I want. So now that my cheesecake mixture is ready, it is time to add in those apples that we made earlier. These are now nice and cool. Make sure they are before you add it into your cream cheese. And all I'm going to do is pop all this in and mix it together. So once all your apples are mixed really well in with your cream cheese mixture, all that's left to do is to pop it into the tin with the base in. So once you have got all your cheesecake mixture into your tin, you want to spin it around and try and level it as I am here, as flat as you can, just to allow you a nice flat surface for when we come to put our toffee sauce on later. So once you are done there, this is going to pop into our fridge. It needs to chill at least four hours before you do anything to it. I tend to do it overnight. So while my cheesecake is chilling in the fridge, I'm going to make my toffee sauce that I'm going to top it with. So I'm going to be heating up my toffee sauce. So I've got my saucepan back. It's nice and clean. And I'm going to measure in here some dark muscovado sugar again. So in here, this is such a simple sauce to make. All it is is some sugar. So I'm using 50 grams of sugar for this. And once you have your sugar in, we're just going to add all our other ingredients. So I'm actually going to use some Lyle's golden syrup in this as well. Now, here's a little tip when you measure out golden syrup. If you are using spoon or anything like that, before you put your golden syrup into it, use a little bit of oil and brush it on the inside of your spoon. And what that's going to do is it's going to make it much easier for the sticky syrup to slip out really easily and not get stuck. So you've got your finger in trying to get it all out. And the final ingredient going in here is some double cream. So what I'm going to do with this mixture is I'm going to bring it to a boil first, make sure everything is really well combined and the sugars are all dissolved. And then once that happens, I'm going to turn it down to about medium heat and cook it for about five minutes or so until the sauce is really thick and beautiful. And then it's just going to get left to cool until I need to use it for my cheesecake. So once your toffee sauce is ready, it will be really, really thick. You can see how it falls in really thick blobs off my spatula. That is absolutely perfect. So I'm going to pop this into a jug and once it has cooled down enough, I'm going to use it on top of my cheesecake. And I'm just going to pour it over the top and then spread it out and let it drip down the sides. And as a little bit of extra special decoration for this, I have here some toffee apples that I'm just going to place on top of my cheesecake just to make it look extra special. And there you have it, my toffee apple cheesecake. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Don't forget to hit like, share and subscribe and do let us know if you make this gorgeous cheesecake yourself. Thanks for joining us today, friends. Happy baking.